One of our favorite shows now is something called Bucky's Report. Every week, Commissioner Robert Bucky comes on and tells you the issues that concern you, concern him as a commissioner, but more importantly, uh, Robert has made a great commitment to, I want to communicate with you, and I'm going to listen to you, and I'm going to meet with you. So, Robert, thank you for coming. Hey, I think Fred, this is good four, to see you. four weeks in a row. Four weeks? Isn't it five? Maybe it's yeah, five. I think okay. it's five. Absolutely. Time flies when we're having fun. Absolutely. Right? I think this is... This is such a great idea, and I'm so glad you did. Well, we appreciate you coming on. And, you know, I just wanted to, I'm going to share something with you. Uh, occasionally we get a criticism mm -hmm. that says we don't ask tough questions. And we, but this show is about doing what's best for the county, getting people the best information we can. We're not going to criticize people. We're not going to criticize their opinions. We're going to put the facts out there. Absolutely. Right? You're doing a great job, and I think it's great. Absolutely. And and, I, and I, let me say on that, if I sure, can. Sure, of course. It is extremely important. This show, yes, is about to show the positive, I think, of the individual. But it's, as I mentioned to you from my very first show, I, I want the tough questions. Sure. I want everything that's tough because I don't want an easy ride. And this is not, anybody that thinks being a county commissioner is an easy ride, they're a fool. I, I was a fool when I was running for county commissioner. This is, as I said before, two full-time jobs. It's seven days a week, 24-7, it looks like to me. Nobody is perfect. I am yeah. doing the best I possibly can, and everything I'm doing is for the benefit of these citizens. And I want the tough questions, so please, when, when a citizen stops at your house or calls you <laughs> on the telephone or emails you, Get a list from that individual, and, and please have them ask me. Or you, you ask me the question, please. There's no secret and queen, secrets in Queen Anne's County. Absolutely, anyway. Robert. That's okay. Let's start out with one that's always at the top of the list: Ken Island Sewer. Where are we? What's happening? Okay. Well, Ken Island Sewer is where it was, I think, two months ago. It's it's in that that holding pattern. I think they're kind of waiting on this impact study, and I'm glad you asked me that. I really am, because a lot of people feel that when we did our vote on the engineer that myself, Mark Anderson, and Steve Wilson went against what we campaigned on. That's not true, people. We did, I, I based mine, and if you listen to the video and you listen to this one, you'll see it when I'll say it again, I do not support the Kent Island Sewer. I didn't support it when I voted for the engineering studies. Put yourself in my position like I'm a juror and I'm listening to a case. I have to have all the evidence laid out in front of me before I can make a sound judgment on this particular case. Well, this was a part of that puzzle that hadn't been done yet. This is going to tell us the actual cost of the project. This is going to give us the overlay of all the projects, of the piping, every home, how complicated it's going to be. Can this box work? Or can this utility type work or not? We're going to have that in front of us and be able to look at that and say, look, this project's either way too costly than what they thought it was, or let's come up with a different idea. I've always said this, Fred, I'll tell you again, I support the cluster system. Sure. That's my opinion. I'm one commissioner. I don't want to stop. I'm not going to throw a wrench in the project, of course. Uh, do I think something needs to be done down there? Absolutely. There's a problem down there. I, I, I'm not a scientist and I'm not a doctor, nor am I going to pretend to be a doctor. I hear about these cases down there, but, um, you know, I, I, I don't know about I, I, I don't know if they're true or they're not. I don't want to question anybody's judgment on that, but where I'm at with this is I, I do not support the canal and sewer, and I will not support it unless I can get real facts in front of me that show that people are getting ill down there from the from uh, you know from the from the human waste water, because yeah. I, you know I why would I why would I vote against something and then someone's kid gets hurt and sure. it, it would be a horrible thing so where I'm at now and I, I don't know about the other commissioners where, where I'm at now is I'm waiting for the engineering studies to be done so that they can be presented to me. I'm going to come up with my own plan, as I mentioned to you before, cluster system. Right. So. And one thing I know you are in favor of is that people attend all the public meetings and information Absolutely. gatherings on this issue so Please. they, like you, can get the facts. Well, you know, Fred, that's a good point, and I'm glad you mentioned that. I, I keep hearing from people, uh, even some commissioners, that the tide is turning down there, right. that there's more positive now towards the sewer than negativity because of these meetings. Well, I disagree. As you know, You've been in politics. You've been around a very long time. When it, when the other side, and I mean the other side, the people that don't want the sewer, they just stop coming. I I, I feel they've stopped coming right. to these meetings because why bother? They're going they think it's it. a done deal. They think it's a done deal. They think the commissioner signed off on this study that opens a door. You know what? It kind of does, but it doesn't to me. As I said, I I I know of four commissioners 
that want to see this particular study before they go forth and make right. a decision. And that's where we I, are. I think that's the fair thing to say. Good, good, good. Absolutely. Now another, uh, not a, another tough question: the homeless shelter. Okay. We got still people. You even tell me about a poll we went on the air. Where are we on that? A absolutely. Look, do, look, this is so gotten out of hand. This. I, I support the homeless. Right. One hundred and fifty percent. If you could do one hundred and fifty, I be, I believe Queen Anne's County deserves a homeless shelter. I just don't think that's the right location. That particular spot, one stage three, closer to two schools sure. in the path. That's my only issue. I'm not stopping there. I have no control to stop it. I don't work for the state of Maryland. I don't have a, an ear to the governor in any state. I haven't talked to the governor. I haven't talked to anybody from the housing department from. Uh, uh, the state of Maryland, sure. I must stop. I've expressed my opinion as a citizen and as a leader of the community. Your leadership is in your action, not your position. That's what leadership is supposed to be about. I signed that particular particular document, and I'm speaking out against that location. You just don't like where the, the plan is now. Yeah. No, let's move it to the end of State Street, to the beginning of Route 18. There's a large building there. Why not put it there? That would be okay. It's away from the schools. There's so many viable locations that we can put this in. I've made statements that there are people willing to donate land, donate land and that's still true. There, there are places in the county we could put this project in on Canal and Graysonville area that could probably save the state close to a million dollars right now. But I'm not forcing it. You know, I, I'll help out with this project. I'll do everything I can to support. I just don't support that location. That's all. Okay. It's, That's it's, fair. People and are turning this around. You know, that Commissioner Bucky is against the homeless. You go on Facebook and there's a particular <laughs> lady on there. And it's not true. As I told you before, my company donates over 100 jackets a year to a housing authority. And that's just one. I do so much for people. To, we need, Queen Anne's County does need this. I concur, but I just don't think that's the right location. It's just like real estate. Location, location, location is the important thing. Absolutely. And now that you spoke of that, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a piece of property on Route 8 that uh, is not in the comp plan. Okay? They, uh, they want to build a, uh, uh, it's 11 acres, and I, I'm trying to show you consistency sure, here, sure. Where, I, where I am consistent with what I do. There's, they want to put an old car They want to put in, a, an, they want to put a, uh, a 20,000 square foot warehouse to build uh, old cars. Right. Great idea, 20 jobs for Queen Anne's County, right? We need jobs. We need jobs, but guess what? I'm your economic development guy, right? I pounded economic development. That's not the right location okay. for this facility. So, you know, I'm trying to be consistent in what I do. If I say this isn't the right location for that, and I can't be a hypocrite and then go, well, that's the right location for this. It's not. That, a, a facility like that should be up in the business park or away from people because I wouldn't want to build $200,000 cars on a highway like Route 8 in the mornings, afternoons, and evenings, and you're building a car, you've got to take it out for a test drive. It gets a little busy. That, that gets, gets a little, a little busy. busy. I'd be afraid someone's going to hit that automobile. So, uh, thanks. For on both of these issues, what you're concerned is you like the idea of getting new businesses and new jobs, and yet obviously you're in favor of helping homeless people in some type of shelter. But Absolutely. again, location. Absolutely. That's, pretty, that's consistent. I think, you know, you speak about the shelter. I think this county, this county has a severe drug, heroin, alcohol problem. This county deserves also to have a true rehab facility. I think somewhere, and you know what, people are calling me a NIMBY. There's a piece of there's a piece of land for sale on Bennett Point Road and Hemsley Drive. I um, I think uh, Mike Katinas owns it. Okay. I don't know what he's asking for it. I say somebody buys that piece of property and stick a facility there, and it's right in my backyard. I'm okay with that. Okay. I, I don't care. That's away from schools. It's away from people. It's the right location for a facility like this. So. Yes. It's kind of common sense, right? It's common yeah, yeah. sense. So to me, I think we should be supporting right now also, once this homeless shelter goes through, we need to now start looking into a rehab facility for the county. And I, and I mean that in the sense that for adults and kids, we don't have it. The heroin rate over here is tr tremendous. It's, 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 it's horrible. And we need to, uh, Queen Anne's County needs to step up. I think the commissioners, uh, they have and they are. Just the other day, myself, Commissioner Wilson, and I sat down with a group um, called the uh, First First Respond Crisis Center. And what this group is, they're out of Kent County, and they want to move into Queen Anne's County. Right. And what they are is they are a uh, 
a, an organization of volunteers that have PhDs in, in science and uh, uh, psychology. These are health professionals. These are yeah. health professionals for teens and adults Terrific. to prevent suicide. Okay. And Commissioner Wilson and I are working on that now to promote that in Quinnians County. We want to bring it into the schools. We want to bring it into the fire departments. We want to bring it to the general public. And I think this is a great opportunity to say that now that this this mobile crisis center will be involved with the hospital. So if someone calls them up and says, hey, we just had someone here uh, try to commit suicide, they come in, they work with the individual. They and, and they continue to work with that person until they're, they're better. Good. I, well, the good news for Channel 7, we're interviewing the director of that in about two weeks. Oh, so you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, they're going to, uh, Commissioner Wilson asked us to get the director oh, okay, here good. on Fireside Chat, so please watch Fireside Chat. Okay. So again, I go into, I'm so glad that we as a community are supporting the people less fortunate than us. You know, today's society is, uh, you know, there's not a lot of people. A lot of people need help. Sure. There really are. I mean, hell, I need help. We all need help in different ways. All of us at some time need help. Absolutely. And I'm just so glad that Queen Anne's County is stepping up to the plate when it comes to homeless, when it comes to this uh, rehab facility that I hope at some point would be done. Now, I don't know if there is one in the county now. There probably are rehab centers in the county. But I want to see a true good, I want to see a rehab center that helps everyone. And then, of course, this crisis. Good, Perfect. good, good projects. Hey, good article in the paper, PSR Guitars has got some money. Want to talk about that a little bit? Absolutely, sure. Well, as you know, our new economic development director, uh, Jamie Gilbert, set up a what they call a bridge fund. And what this bridge fund does is it, it funds operations like PSR Guitar to help them get a particular project off the ground. You know? It's, it's, it's money that's set aside for specifically economic development. And this was done two years ago by the past commissioners. They, um, they put 50 cents from the recreation tax into these funds. And this fund was set up to use specifically for that. So we're only following that direction. It's, you know, I, I hear PSS cars doesn't need the money, blah, blah, blah. I, you know, I don't know if they need the money. I don't look at their, their books as a county commissioner. I don't even make a decision on it as a county commissioner. That's, I, I'm, the commissioners really aren't part of that process as, as people seem to think we are. We're not. This, this was a group set up. It's a, they let us know about it and made a recommendation. make a recommendation to us, but we don't go out and pursue these type of avenues. Okay. There's, yes, there's PSR guitar, but there's probably, Fred, about 10 other companies right now that are taking advantage of this that five of them companies will be moving into Queen Anne's County and will be bringing over 250 jobs within the next three months. Good. So it's a real positive thing. And it's not like we're taking your actual tax dollars that were collected to do that. This was tax money that was set up to recreation tax, a soft tax, mm -hmm. that um, is being put in for this project in the last set set it up and we're gonna we're gonna leave it alone because it's a great idea it's it worked in the past and it's working now so. well you talked about on the last show that that's helped the existing businesses that uh, are here right now absolutely. contributing to the community as we attract new business but let's take care of the figure of the folks who are here now well it's called retention sure it's retention you know if we were to lose PSR guitar one of our largest companies in Queen Anne's County that's about 1.4 million dollars per year that this county would lose and just to piggyback tax, that does not include the property tax that has to be paid on the property. That doesn't include the 86 employees that live in Queen Anne's County that probably have mortgages, so now they're paying taxes. Then they spend money at our shops and our restaurants. So overall, we did a mathematical uh, equation to see what, if we lost that company, what the cost would have been, and it would have been about $4.2 million mm -hmm. overall to this county. Let's keep them here. Absolutely. <laughs> Plus, they're bringing their rate they're, with this money is a joint effort with the state of Maryland. So the state's giving them 100000 Queen Anne's County's giving them two, and they have to hire 20 employees. So we'll make that money back. Sure. And, it's, and, and, and people are calling it a grant. It's not true. It's a grant slash loan. So... But the important thing is kind of patting on the back someone who's contributed to our community and continues to sure. contribute. That's encouraging. Uh, and you know what? And there's a lot of companies, and if you're listening to this now, please contact Jamie Gilbert. If you're interested in expanding your business, contact them. Okay. Uh, Wheatland's Project, <laughs> one of your favorites. Absolutely. What's sure. an update on that? Well, uh, I can tell you that we have, a, uh, as I said before, a 60-day stay on the project. I think the project's moving in a positive direction. I, I think that once this is said and done, I believe 99.9% .9 of the citizens will be glad that the commissioners stepped in and stopped 
the twelfth, the eleventh hour, the eleventh minute, what the last set did, right, or right. given the uh, the waiver on the weekend. Right. Okay. We are going to have a great deal for the county. It's going to benefit all citizens. It's going to benefit Hickory Ridge. It's going to benefit Queenstown commissioners and Queenstown citizens. I think. Um, it's going to benefit the entire county, but most importantly, it's going to benefit the Baltimore DC corner. That that road affects primarily because of what could be built there. Sure. So it's moving it's along. It's ongoing. It's, and we're, I, you're going to keep us updated. I'll keep you updated. Going. Obviously, we're being sued, so I can only say so much. Uh, but I can tell you, it's moving in that positive direction. And let me say this: Remember, I ran and I said that everybody deserves a seat at the table. Well, that's exactly what's happening here. Good. I have brought in another commissioner, and I have three citizens that are part of the negotiation with us talking talking We're all trying to work out what's We're trying to work it out county. so that it can come back to the county commissioners okay so i'm keeping my word and i will always do that i think the citizens deserve to have a voice in the process so. good very good now i always want to start singing ymca but it's y all over YMCA. facebook i know we can we're gonna how do you how does that go what is it y m c a i could never do well, this that. could be banned by the fcc from right. there. uh where are what's the latest um, well, I think we're going to know Tuesday. Okay. We, we sent an MOU. coming Tuesday. That's okay. coming Tuesday. We sent an MOU to the Y. Uh, I support the YMCA 100%, as I did during the, the election. I still believe that the county shouldn't give them any money. The deal that we put together, Jim Moran and I, donating the land to them and the infrastructure, they love that idea. It's a fantastic idea. I'm a little concerned about some time strengths. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned as a county commissioner, I, I feel that however much time the YMC, YMCA wants to build that, they should have that time. Let them work it out. So that's what I can say so right we're now. We're still in the pot, and so next Tuesday or the next commissioner's meeting, we, we should know, know something, more. I'm thinking. Terrific. Now, here's something I didn't even know about. Mm -hmm. Uh, sub police station up in Northern County in Southersville. Absolutely. If I'm in Northern County or anywhere in the county, good deal. Tell us about this. Well, that's good. During the election, yeah. as you know, I knocked on a lot of doors up north. Actually, uh, I, I locked on doors in Queen Anne's County, all but District 3 I live in. I, I decided to go outside of my sure. district, but the, mostly I did the Northern District. And the biggest complaint I received was, there's never a police officer around. Just don't see him. Just don't see him. Well, guess what? We now have a police substation in Southersville. Terrific. Now, right downtown Southersville? It's, it's in the new, it's going to be in the uh, commissioner's building. Okay. The, uh, they, they've granted the uh, county and the sheriff's office right. space. It's right. a very nice, probably about double Good. the size of this. Okay. Uh, Gary is, is excited about this opportunity now, to we'll have. will house a policeman 24-7? 24-7. It will Perfect. house police officers 24-7. Okay. So that gives that gives them that that northern direction now. So it doesn't take you know 20 minutes to get from Centerville yeah, okay. up north. Now it takes five minutes. Be a sub that's great. If I'm a northern county person, I'm delighted. Right. Absolutely. That that's sense. a positive. That's one of the things that a lot of us ran on, and now that's come in tuition. Good. Good. On another positive note, I know you're a big fan of the volunteer fire departments, and you wanted to tell us a little about something happened in Graceville. There was oh, absolutely. Big fire there, and this there was a it great, all worked out. There was a big fire there on Tuesday. And um, there were seven companies, I believe, were involved. Queen Anne's County. Um, seven volunteer companies. Right? Seven companies uh, from Queen Anne's County, Talbot County, and Anne Arundel County came over. And they all worked together. And the chief on, uh, the, the, the commanding chief, I guess they call it, was Jay. He's from Graysonville. Do you just watch these individuals do what they do? It blows my mind. I mean, they're volunteers. Every one of these guys, there must have been, I want to say, 50, 60 fire, and they were all volunteers working together in unison, getting this fire, controlling it so it didn't burn down these houses and, you know, create, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of damage for the citizens and possibly the county. We, again, should be blessed to have volunteer firefighters in this county, okay? And, and I'm glad you asked me that because, again, we're having our budget session. And I want to see, as a county commissioner, I'm not putting anything in this budget whatsoever. I'm not. You know how county commit. You know we ran for election, and people out there on oh, do you watch these county commissioners? They're going to put uh, pet projects. Right. That's not the case. The only thing I'm asking for, if you want to call it a pet project, is the volunteer firefighters deserve to be paid for what they do when they retire. So you want to see some type of compensation Absolutely. when they retire. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And the only thing I'm asking is is that we take them from 150 to $200 a month after they retire in 30 years. A very modest stipend. Very modest I mean, stipend. That's nothing. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, These are people, who, men and women, who 
rescue us when we have heart attacks or houses on fire, any emergency, they're there, right? Absolutely, and let me tell you, I got to watch them for the very first time in action, and I was trim very impressed. impressed. I, if, if this county had to pay for a firefighting system, we'd go broke. We, we, we couldn't <laughs> afford it. Okay. They had the fire trucks, the houses, and they have uh, paid officers and paid. The county couldn't afford it. Okay, well, good, and thank you for putting out a shout out to them. I know they Absolutely. appreciate that. One of your big events, the early successes you've had, you had an earlier town hall meeting. Now you're having one coming up May 7th, and I know you want to share that. Keep reminding people. We're going to do that every time you come on Absolutely. the show. Absolutely. May 7th, take it off. Please, if you're interested in talking to me, whether it be good, bad, indifferent, I'm having a town hall meeting on May the 7th at the Graysonville Community Center between 7 and 8. My primary topic is going to be primarily on the comp plan. I don't want to open the comp, don't take it wrong, but I, I, I want to explain the comp plan to citizens out there so they understand what the comp plan is and how the review process is. I will have one person from planning and zoning only from the county talking specifically about that. Also the meeting will be about you asking me questions directly and I, I want to hear how you think I'm doing, what, what do I need to correct, what is it you want me to you know, focus on for you. I, I want to do four of these a year. I think it's extremely important to get out other than this, but to speak with the people. Good. Because so many of them are upset about certain things. I mean, there's a guy wrote in the Bay Times about the PSR guitar thing. You know, please come talk come to, to me. Meeting. Come to the meeting. Talk to me. And you're not afraid to discuss any topic. Absolutely not. I'm not going to hide. questions, and you have some staff members there who can help you assist with questions. Is that true? I'll, yeah. have, one, I'll have one person from the county other okay. than... QAC TV people, right, okay. but my town hall meetings, I think I'm not bringing in the county. Emphasis on you. It's emphasis is on okay. me and as your county commissioner. But if I have a specific topic, I'm going to ask someone from that department to be there. Good, good, okay. Uh, Rose, I think <coughs> you have a new five-year plan to recycle. Abs Tell me about that. Absolutely. Well, as you know, it's the budget time, and one of the things that we, a lot of us ran on in the county is our roads. They haven't been worked on. Well, the last several years, uh, the state of Maryland has cut back our roads. We understand that. Sure. So the county really hasn't had a lot of money to put into the roads. I think it's about a half a million bucks. Well, what we want to do now is, we, in order to, to boost Queen Anne's County, the image is important. Sure. You can't bring in houses and you can't bring in businesses if your roads look yeah. like crap. Yeah. You got potholes everywhere and it hasn't been paved in 20 years. So this new set of commissioners wants to do a five-year plan. We want to do 20% a year. So we'll do 20% this year, then 20% this year, then 20% in 20. And start the whole thing over. And then start over. the process over again. Keep Good. going like that. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to do our best to budget it in, in this coming budget to get that done. I, I think that is a high priority for the citizens of this county. They deserve to have good roads. And the people traveling our roads from out of the state and out of the county deserve to travel on safe roads. Sure. Schools, environment, roads, these are the ones the citizens hey. Especially after this winter with all the potholes, it's nice to know somebody's on it. Well, Robert, i got to say in this show, we talked about 11 different, different topics, and here might be the mm -hmm. highlight of the show. We sang YMCA. <laughs> that might scare a lot of people away. Well, as usual, thank you for your enthusiasm. Thank you for uh, being on the show. And I like the uh, positive image can you I, put. Can oh, I say please, one more it's your show. Please, your okay. show. Uh, I have a couple of bills coming up. As sure. you know, I want the county commissioners to go to once-a-week meetings. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm asking the citizens to support me. I'm asking that the county commissioners go to once-a-week meetings, and this is how basically it's going to be. It is January, February will be twice. Uh, March, April, May would be four meetings in that month. June, July, and August would be two meetings. September, October would be four, and then, of course, November, December would be two. It's extremely important to me that a county, of the, you know, a lot of our meetings are marathon meetings. Sure. And if we can break these meetings down during our busy time, and our busy time is generally from the end of February to Your June. Your budget time. Your yeah, budget time. Exactly. And then from September to October. So I'm asking for the, for the support to do that. I'm not sure I need the support. Uh, I, actually, I'm sorry, I do need the support because I'm not sure I have it on the commission now for a particular reason. Also, I'm going to be putting out a bill here pretty soon on uh, lowering taxes. Okay. So the um, last set of commissioners raised the um, uh, the homestead tax to 1.5. I'm going to lower that down to 1.3. All right. And um, these I, are I, things you're going to bring up at the next couple meetings. Absolutely. Meeting. Okay. I'm just letting citizens sure. know what I'm doing there. Also, I'm going to put in a bill along with Commissioner Anderson or Commissioner 
Moran, as I mentioned, a story would happen before with him going to semen. I didn't know. So that together, him and I both are going to introduce a bill that we take our rainy day fund from 7% to 10%. Okay. Okay. And I have one other bill I'm working on, and that's to change the liquor law. What are you going to do with that? Well, I, as I said, I, we don't have any chain restaurants in this county. We don't because the way the liquor license is. And I, and I think the citizens deserve to have that. In the northern part of the county, there's nothing up there. Centerville, what do you guys really have around here? In that the night change that the well, alcohol. Well, think now. about where the county office yeah. building's going. Wouldn't it be nice to have a TGI Fridays there? Sure. I mean, why sure. not? Uh, the Wheatlands Project, wouldn't it be nice to have a restaurant there? Well, the way the licenses are written, the way they hand out the liquor license in this county, we'd have to make some changes to that. And that's what I want to do. One of the me reasons why is... We have some people interested in coming, like a, uh, a microbrewery pub, you know, where they brew yeah, the beer there. Yeah, it's kind of fun to watch while you're eating your sandwich. Exactly, they serve yeah. sandwiches. So we have a firm interested in coming to Queen Anne's County. I'm great. Absolutely. I can't say who they are just yet, but, you know, let me tell you, it's going to be great. It's going to be fun, but they can't come unless we With change that way. Because okay. they, don't, they don't live here in the county. Okay, so. well, good. So it sounds like you're staying busy. Absolutely. And on top of all this, the budget, right? Oh, the which budget. Which won't end, which won't end until, I guess, the last night in June, right? Well, you know, the funny thing with the budget is, to me, has been so far the school board, to be honest with you. It's, um, that's a large part of the county budget. And um, I went to my second school board meeting yesterday. You're the, and so everyone knows you're the commissioner who's a liaison between the commissioners, right, and the school board, am I correct? Absolutely. Yes. I think funding our children should be our number one priority. Sure. A, a, a friend of mine once said, if it, if it benefits the students, that's what you look at. Sure. When you're it's a number one priority that, for kids, right? Right. So well, when I'm looking at the budget for the school board, I'm going to be looking at what benefits the students. Now, obviously, you can tie a line to maintenance to this. I mean, anybody can sure. say that this, well, this benefit, the generator benefits us too, blah, blah, blah. To me, I don't buy that. I think that's what gener what Does it directly help them in the classroom? Directly help them in the saying? classroom is what I'm saying is what I, as a county commissioner, will be focusing on. So I just want the general public to know that as a liaison myself. There. That's another meeting night you have. And that's a marathon night. meeting. Absolutely. There's been a lot of talk of, already we had our first meeting. Uh, there's been a lot of talk that the county wants to hire 26 new additional employees on top of the 10 we've already done. But let me tell you, that's not a done deal. I don't support that right now. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not one to put this county, I do not want to put this county in debt. Absolutely not. I, I believe that, um, you know, we're not, as, we're not done with the process yet. I think once it's done, it's going to look good. I don't like the way it is now. Personally, that's just my opinion, sure. okay? You know, that's the way I was raised. Uh, so that's the way I run my businesses, and that's the way I want to help run the county. And uh, it's an important process to do. It truly is. And uh, when you sit there and you look at it, people go, well, the county's got all this money. You know, we really don't. Yeah. It's, Most it's, of it's spent before you even look at it, right? Absolutely. And, uh so that's, I just wanted to make that point out there. There's a lot of talk about it, but I don't, there's some things I do not support, so. Well, I think the point's well taken. Not only are you covering a lot of topics, but you're certainly staying busy, and you have some creative ideas, and we appreciate Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks, well, Robert, Fred. thank you, okay? My name's Fred McNeil. You've been watching Bucky's Report. We're very lucky. Commissioner Robert Bucky comes on once a week. Talked about 11 different topics today and some new bills he's putting on. He encourages your questions. Please come to his town hall meeting. And, uh, Robert, your enthusiasm, I think, carries an awful lot of uh, goodwill, okay? Thanks. My name is Fred McNeil. My time's up. Thank you for your time. We're going to see you next time. YMCA. Well, yeah. <laughs>